real quick intro, which isn't actually going to be that quick. Welcome to episode number 15. Finally, we're finally back. I'm back. Although technically, I guess for you guys, it's just a normal another week. Technically, last week was my week back. Sorry, my hair looks like shit. I forgot to grab a hat. But anyways, talk a little bit about what's going on with my back. What's going on with my uh, my foot here. Wow, that looks horrible. <coughs> Usually when I have my hair out, I, you know, slick it back with something. But, yeah, whatever. Today, today is just, I'm doing this. And it doesn't matter. We got our boy uh, Bruce Lee here at the, on the tables. For those of you who can see, for those of you who are just listening... Start watching, I guess. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else? I also uh, lay out some post-apocalypse on you guys. Got a few articles for you. And also I uh, debuted, kind of. I started using a beer delivery service called Tavar. I'll uh, put a tag in the uh, description, let you guys look it up. And... I previewed one beer that I was drinking and trying out from Blackstack Brewing. Go to their Instagram, look it up. And now I'm also trying out another one called Body by ETNYC. Now this guy's uh, interesting, which I didn't realize this whenever I first started drinking this. And it was pretty pretty late at night too. But this is actually, it's a sour ale, but uh, brewed with a little bit of milk sugar and energy drink. So this one, this one has the, uh, oh, please roll can gently before opening. Didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, so this one's got a bit of a fruity kick to it. And I'm sure if I, yeah, a couple of these will probably fuck you up pretty good, but. Uh, ETNYC is actually Evil Twin Brewing out of New York. And, uh, that last one, Blackstacks, out of, uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. So, you know, give them a look up. Anyways, uh, today's, or this week's is gonna be a little bit on the short side. I'm also running behind. Again, I'm still, you know... Getting back into the uh, the groove of things over here, so I hope you you know relax, enjoy the episode, and from here on forward, things should start being better. In fact, my actually my back's actually doing a lot better than wow. I had a little whistle in my voice there, a little a little shed in there. <laughs> every once in a while, I every once in a while I can do a. Uh, Good impression of uh, Herbert from uh, Family Guy. You're like, hey, Chad. Shh, shh. It's a... Uh, fuck. It's a little hard to get the whistle in there. Oh, there we go. That was a good one. Uh, anyways. Enjoy the episode. See you guys again later. Welcome back to the closet and to the podcast, or at least for me, welcome back, welcome back to me, thank you, thank you, and I finally figured out why the last couple episodes were all, uh, you know, glitchy glitchy, because, well, the webcam I'm using has a, um, one of those ring lights, <laughs> Fuck. and while it hasn't been a problem before for some reason... I tried uh, turning it down just now, and that, that seemed to clear everything up. Anyways, episode number 15. Here we are again. Uh, today will not be a, uh, a podcast. I figured I'd save that for later. When I had some more, uh, more time, more stuff planned, so I just, went with a, I just went with the edibles for now. It's 
still dry out my mouth. Uh, anyways, for those of you who either uh, know me or have uh, tuned into my last episode, I had some problems going on with my back, where my uh, my spine got twisted out of shape, and uh, also started pinching my uh, sciatic nerve pretty badly, which is the one that's the main one that goes from your spine all the way down through your leg and down to your foot, so. Not a good place to have problems. I mean, neither is anywhere else, but... Yeah, so... I spent... Uh, well, th this last week has been going pretty good for me. I've been able to, uh... I'm, I'm now... Almost back to normal. The, uh... Pretty much up through... Like, the 4th of July and the week before... Though, you know, my back was completely fucked up. Uh, and also, I, w I went to the uh, the chiropractor a few times, and, you know, he uh, he did what they do. You know, cracked my back like a whip, pretty much. And, you know, some other uh, mobilizations and muscle pressures. Or not muscle pressures, but skeletal stuff. Whatever, you know what a chiropractor is. Helped me out immensely. In fact, I would say that uh, as far as my actual back, I feel better than I have in like a good 10 years almost, which is back when I originally had problems with uh, a leaky disc and uh, I had to have a, uh, I had to have a discectomy, which is, or a mini discectomy in my case, which is where they, uh, you know, they cut a hole in your back and use either like a like a suction probe or tweezers to remove uh part of your di the part of your uh disc that's leaking into your spinal cord which is expensive and I didn't really want to go through that again and fortunately I didn't have to uh so anyways yeah like I said last week has been a lot better for me I've been uh I'm at the point now where I only have like a little bit of pain down in my uh, foot in the mornings, but I'm still experiencing like a little bit of numbness. But I finally got back to uh, running around doing some work today, so things are good. <clears throat> I'm getting hoarse, that's weird. Whew. Whew. Had a little tired, sorry guys. But, oh yeah, tor earlier towards the beginning of the week, I, uh, because I, I still have, like, a bit of numbness in my foot, and I had a lot more about a week ago, and I was lucky enough to roll my foot at the beginning of, at the beginning of the week, so my ankles still, the, the outs, you know, my foot, uh, rolled inwards. So, those tendons on my ankles are kind of, they're pretty tender, so. You know, I, I do still have, like, a little bit of numbness and the, just a little bit of burning in my foot in the morning. Otherwise, you know, I'm mostly okay, and I'm just waiting for my ankle to unfuck itself so I can, you know, do some cardio and stuff and really get back to it, so. It's all good. Oh shit, a lot of things have, uh, a lot of things have happened since, in the past couple of weeks, so, I'm not gonna try and get into everything, uh, I do have some, uh, po oh, I do have a bunch of post-apocalypse that I saved up, some of them might be a little bit old, but, you know, who cares, this is all about my, my take, more than what's real, I guess, I don't know, uh, another thing I started doing for myself is, I signed up for an app called Tavour or Tavour. It's T A V O U R. And uh basically what it is is it's a um it's an app that caters uh not caters. Yeah, caters uh craft beer, like limited craft beer from small breweries. And um 
So, th yeah, they basically they have uh, different shipping periods, and you can select uh, beer that's available. Everything's limited to add to your box until a certain date, and then it gets shipped out to you. And you can also set your app to give you a uh, like a subscription plan where you get a box of 12 beers that they pick out. And you can have this done either, you know, every month, every two months, or I went with every three months. Because it is a little bit spendy. Each of the, each uh, beer is like bar prices. And I also screwed up too, and thought that I had to uh, select beers to add to my box. I didn't realize that it would, uh, closer to the uh, shipping date, would, well, either I'm high or my chin looks weird. I think it might just be the uh, the camera angle, but um, <clears throat> yeah, no. So I thought that I had to select bra select bars, select beers, and and put them in my box, but then later on I found out that it actually auto populates with some stuff that they already have uh, figured out before. So I ended up getting double, which you know. I ain't complaining. I ain't, I ain't saying no to accidental beer. To that point, I wanted to go ahead and show off. Well, I've already had, I've already tried a few different ones, but I wanted to go ahead and show off one on the podcast here today. Uh, today, I this is one that I had selected myself on accident, but not really. Uh, the Hmm, got a burp. The brewery is Black Stack Brewing. So black like the color, stack like a smokestack. Uh, and the beer is called DDH Dad Jokes. We've got plenty of those around here. It's a, I'm not sure what D, I don't know what DDH means, but it's a, it's also, it's a Dippo, which is a double IPA. And oh shit. 8.6%. <laughs> All right. This is going to get me going. Let me see if I can see where this brewery's from. Minnesota. St. Paul. A lot going on in that area. <laughs> so, here we go. Let's try this out. I know I've said before, I'm not really... I'm normally not into uh, IPAs, but... I don't know, maybe it's just having the pandemic around and but i i do like trying new things at least so bottoms up i don't say cheers nothing's worse than like a white non-british guy who says cheers all the time i know at least one of my old jobs i had uh one of our one of our executive assistants always ended his emails with cheers <laughs> no, i won't say more so I'm sure he's a nice guy. I don't actually remember. Nice in public, at least. Uh, yeah, so this thing. Mm, strong and hoppy. Definitely an IPA. The end's a little bit smoother, though. Like right at the end of the aftertaste. So it doesn't have that crisp bite. Ooh, is a little on the sour end though too. I get the feeling that I'm I'm only gonna need one of these tonight. But let's go ahead and get into some post-apocalypse for you guys. All right, first article. Uh, this one's a little bit a little bit older. Crystal Kaiser, a 19-year-old sex trafficking victim who killed her abuser, has been released from jail. Uh, this would have been... Yeah, this was a couple weeks ago that this happened. I remember seeing, you know, this story a while back about some girl who... Uh, yeah, she had an abuser. Sucks. Uh... And, uh, yeah, she managed to fight this guy off and kill him. And I should, al well, I should also mention that this girl is black. 
as well, so, which shouldn't matter, but of course, you know, we're talking about, you know, the U.S. law, so it ends up mattering somehow, when it shouldn't, but, yeah, so this girl killed her abuser, but, uh, you know, they were trying her for murder, rather than, than you know, having it be self-defense, which is, you know, it's just bullshit, right, so, it's good that she's finally, you know, out, and, you know, hopefully back safe with, uh, her family, unless it was them, which, uh, eh. but, good for you, Crystal Kaiser, Hope you have a uh, a long and better life from now on. Next article. This one is actually a post. <laughs> so some guy started a Facebook group called I'm White and I'm Proud of It. So he started a racist Facebook group and then waited for all the people in there to... Uh, you know, start posting, you know, a bunch of racist shit, and then he, uh, screen grabbed everything in the group and sent it to all their employers. Now, y yeah, it's kind of bad thing to do, but deserve it, you know? I don't know. Just, I get it. Especially nowadays. Uh, there's another article, which I'm not gonna... The title of this one is Debunking a Myth. The Irish Were Not Slaves Too. So, I don't know uh, if anybody else has had to uh, hear this or deal with this, but a lot of times when the subject of uh, African-American slavery here in the United States comes up, uh... Well, a a anytime, you know, a anything related to uh, some kind of bigotry or classism comes up, you know, there's always people who, <laughs> for whatever reason, you know, get offended in some way. But they're not necessarily, like, offenders themselves. You know what I mean? So, like, if you're talking about uh, <laughs> uh, something that happens to African Americans, for example. And... When I say, like, an offender would be, like, if somebody who's actively racist tries to then come at you. But, no, I'm, I'm talking about the people who will uh, try to interject some other point. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Who try to interject some other point, meaning well, but really doing harm by... Uh, Diffusing... No. I don't know what the word is. Motherfucker. Sorry, my candle's buzzing. I thought there was a fly in there. Uh, devaluing, you know, the argument that's being made. So, well, one that would happen is anytime the, uh, the subject of uh, African-American slavery in the United States would come up, you you'd occasionally get people saying like, "Oh, well, you know, the Irish were slaves too." And basically what this article is, is uh talks about you know what it really was. So, you know, a lot of uh what the, one one thing that they had in Europe was uh indentured servitude, which is where you know, for whatever reason, you would work for someone for a set period of time uh, for no monetary gain, but, you know, those people would have to, you know, house you and all that stuff. Which is different from slavery, where an enslaved person was, you know, treated as property. Indentured servants were treated as property. Abused, probably, but, you know, it's... It's a different thing. So that that's what this article is about. As always, you know, I'll post it in the description so you guys can look it up and do your own work.
<laughs> uh, next article. Dear Hollywood, we don't want to go back to normal. Normal wasn't working. So this is an article from uh, a quote-unquote Hollywood insider. Basically talking about uh, working conditions in production. Which, you know, can be strenuous. Quite. I'm not, I'm not sure if I uh, mentioned before on a previous episode or something like that, that, you know, I used to work in post-production. And there were a lot of times, well, first of all, you know, and anything in like production and post-production is, uh, there's not a lot of job security at all. And usually, uh, you know, so you, you'll get some projects that last, you, you usually you're hired on, as a temporary basis too. So there's always, you know, some sort of a uh, job hunt sooner or later. But, you know, if, if you're lucky, you'll get a project, you'll get onto a project that lasts, uh, more than a year. Uh, if you're not lucky or more often than not, you'll see projects that are, you know, six to eight months. And, you know, even in post-production, sometimes you'll get hired on for as short as, two months and so there's that and then there's also a lot of long hours I'd imagine uh, especially if you're like working on set then you're also in like uh, semi strenuous physical conditions uh, including you know going back and forth from set especially if there's no like lodging situation or anything like that going on and so, you know, this this article is, uh, well, it talks more about that, basically. And, you know, just kind of, uh, it's like a, it's a, it's a call for uh, the artist industry to, you know, basically stand up for itself a little bit more, which I get, I agree with. I came from that world. I wouldn't mind being back in it. You know, there you go. That stuff is strong. All right, I need to speak up a little bit too. Okay, I'll make I'll make this one the last one for today. A South African couple has turned elephant dung into award-winning gin. I didn't read it. I didn't bother finding out how. I just knew that I was. <laughs> I just knew that I was going to pull it up for you guys. So, again. I'm going to put it in the descriptions. I'll let you guys look it up. Who knows? Maybe you'll see it in your uh, local liquor store or grocery store. Like I said, I like trying new things. I'd, I'd give it a sip. You know? It's, really, it's kind of weird this gin, though. i got to be honest. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. So, right now it's mostly sold in South Africa and um, places in Europe now are getting it too. The liquor is called Indlovu Gin, which is, uh, Indlovu is apparently Zulu for elephant. Uh, let's see. Tasters far and wide are praising a uniquely smoky, woody, earthy flavor. That comes from the unlikeliest of ingredients. Elephant shit. So, yeah. Go ahead and check that out. You know, if somebody likes it, you should uh, send me a DM or leave me a comment here on the YouTube channel. I haven't gotten any DMs yet from uh, hopeful fans. Just a lot of uh, hooker robots if you will. But anyways, you know, I'm glad to be back. <clears throat> I'm back in the 8th grade apparently. Uh, I'm bad to be, I'm bad to be glack. I just made a new Italian restaurant there. 
I am glad to be back in front of the camera for you guys and to keep this bullshit going for as long as possible. Probably until the day I die, maybe. Or if I'm insanely rich, I don't know. Actually, if I'm insanely rich, you'll probably hear even more from me because I'll be able to do insanely rich bullshit things. <laughs> but... Oh, froze up again. Alright, whatever. That's my cue. Have a good night. See y'all later.